Hello Internet, I'm John. Welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris 3.11 uh, Determined Exterminators. I initially wasn't really planning to make a series out of this, I just wanted to kind of, you know, run, do, do the initial moves. Um, but I was thinking about it, and uh, so, so last time, we built up this ally bank and then didn't meet anybody. We're all, all dressed up and nobody to fight. Um, so, this is not a very good position, or this is not where exterminators want to be. Um, and, and this led to the thought of like, okay, this this is actually interesting now, right? Um, many of my my favorite Stellaris games, the ones that I look back on uh, fondly, have been the ones that had kind of rocky openers, rocky starts, where things didn't go to plan. Um, you know, ones where you spawn next to a purifier, ones where somebody else steals your guaranteed habitable, stuff like that. Uh, and this feels like one of those openers. So. I'm actually kind of curious to, to, to think about, like, how do you play out this position where you alloy rush and then it doesn't land because there's nobody, nobody to land it on. Um, so in terms of where we are, right, we're, it's 20 through 20. We have like one tech from each category and they've been decent techs, but um, it, it's not much. Uh, so we're probably about 20 years behind on tech. Well, no minute, uh, you know. 15. Um, I, you know, we have one lab. We've had one lab running this entire game. Uh, by this point, I would reckon that the AI is probably running like five, would be kind of my guess. Um, so we're way behind on tech. Uh, we, we have half a tradition that doesn't do us any good if we're not fighting people or not fleeting up. Um, we're, we're most of the way done with it. I think it's I, I'm, I'm on the fence about whether we finish it out to pick up an Ascension perk, or whether we just start something else the next time we get it, the opportunity. Um, we have very little territory. We have one colony. Again, you, by this point in the game, I would reckon the AI probably has, has at least taken their two guaranteed habitables and is maybe up to four colonies plus their home world. Would be kind of what I would expect based on other games you know, at Ensign that I have used Observer Mode on. Um, and, and we have very little little space as well, which... So that's kind of the, the problems that we have. Um, in terms of... Well, also, also, some of our leaders are kind of crap. Um, we, we, we got this guy with the counselor-only trait that doesn't do us any good. Um, we got some some pretty questionable... You know, we got, we got double archaeology and no survey speed... Uh, well, weapons range is okay, at least. Um, although that's more of a, you know, it's better in the artillery era than in the corvette era. Um, in terms of our government guys, we got some some kind of like, uh, you know, the, these intel level ones. Those will be handy later, but they're not helpful now. Um, another issue we have, I was thinking about it, and um, that, uh, that Streamline Protocols trait that reduces Empire size from pops. This doesn't help us right now, right? Because we're still under the Empire size like threshold. <laughs> um, whereas if we had taken Logic Engines and we're producing more science, that would help us right now. Additionally, Streamline Protocols stacks multiplicatively with uh, Empire size reduction from pops from most sources because this is applied on a, like on a per pop basis, so like each pop that has this trait reduces its own empire size impact, um, which gets computed like after all of your uh, empire size reduction from pops from traditions gets applied. Um, and as a machine intelligence, we get empire size from pops reduction from our ruler. So we're already at like minus 9% there, and then we get it from governors as well. Um, and then traditions. So machines already have like a pretty good amount of empire size from pops reductions. And I'm wondering if, yeah, maybe maybe the raw output on science points would have been better there. Uh, so, so that's, yeah. So those are kind of all of our problems that I know of right now. In terms of strengths and opportunities, we could, our position could be worse. And our position could be worse if we had spent all those alloys to build a fleet because alloys in the bank don't have upkeep. Um, ships that you have built have upkeep. So that's your like worst case scenario for a like busted rush is you 
You, you, you made all these alloys, you built all this fleet, and then you realize there's nobody there to throw it at. Because um, then you're stuck with the fleet, you're stuck paying the upkeep until you find somebody, uh, and that's just going to be a drag. So um, we have all these alloys, we can use them for stuff that helps us get ahead that isn't fleet. We can use it for outposts, we can use it for colony ships, we can use it for um, star bases to get uh, solar panels and another shipyard and all that good stuff. So um, this is a lot of like potential energy that we have that we haven't directed towards any purpose yet. Another opportunity or strength that we have is that we have all these building slots. This is still resource consolidation. Um, we can build labs really fast because we don't need to build city districts. to, to build. So we can get back up to like five labs pretty quick. The question will be feeding it energy, right? Because um, this uses eight energy. So yeah, we could, we could build four more labs and it would cost us, you know, it would be like half of our energy. Uh, surplus so like yeah we, we can do that and then we'll just have to like move pops around to make it work um probably we'll pull off of alloys what i want to do here is i want to kind of maintain around an 8k alloy bank as we continue expanding so that when we meet someone we have the that potential energy available to fleet up um but we uh yeah we don't we don't need necessarily to maintain the same level of alloy output Right, because I mean, the cap is 15k. If we do this another 10 years without meeting somebody, we're going to be approaching cap, especially if we keep growing LA output. Um, so, as far as like planetary development stuff, um, okay, so all three of those generators are behind one blocker. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I, you know, I still like the plan to make this a Forge world. We can do kind of some energy on the side, but. Um, other, you know, we still want this. Was this? This was like an okay generator world. That doesn't matter. Uh, what was this one? Resettlement, immigration poll, society research. I mean, society is not the most important, but uh, you know. Oh, and it's got that's, and it has a flat uh, output. That's kind of interesting. Um, you know, plus eight society research. It would be like plus fifty percent at this point in the game. So um, that's something to think about with this kind of otherwise lousy world. You know, it, this could be a tech world with the society, with the, the Titanic life bonuses. Um, right, this was the mining world we want. And it's only two hops away. Do we skip over this one? Uh, we might. Um, that one we can't actually use because it's adjacent to the Fallen Empire. So if we settle there, we'll lose it. Um, and then... Yeah, I want to be coming up here and, like, maybe taking up to here. Um, and that's another another thing we have going for us, is that our cost to build outposts is only 50 influence, whereas normally it would be, like, 75. And we get this bonus. Um, I, I think it's from... from uh, Exterminator? Just, like, the, the Civic, straight up? Um, Starbase influence cost minus 30%. Yeah. Um, so we have that available to us to help us kind of recover from the situation. I wonder, you know, I had never really thought about like why that bonus was there. And I wonder if this is why it's there is to help you recover from a, a failed ally rush. Um, and the other thing uh, is that, so we're, we're down on colonies. That's true. Um, fortunately, this, these pair of lousy colony focus traits, where I was like, oh, this is bad for us. Well, in a situation where we had to actually go colonize all of our own planets, um, that could be good. And and in particular, the uh, the pair of 15% colony speed, colony development speed bonuses, um, that adds up, right? I, I was thinking like, next tradition, do we want prosperity, expansion, or um, versatility maybe, the new versatility. And, uh, Part of what I wanted out of expansion, one, obviously there's the, the extra pop growth of the free pop per colony, but the colony development speed would help us get colonies up and running um, faster. But given that we have it from the council in two ways, I think maybe we just do prosperity uh, and then probably unyielding as third tradition. Cause I think we are gonna, you know, we're, we're not gonna, even if we found somebody, it's gonna be such, such a hike to go 
attack their capital, right? And that's really what you want to do in early warfare, is you want to get on top of the capital for three reasons. Uh, one is that often it's their only shipyard. So if you take out their capital starbase, they kind of often lose their ability to reinforce for a while. Um, which is time that you can be reinforcing where they're like building a shipyard somewhere else. Um, so that gives you a numerical advantage for a while. Uh, two, because when their fleet comes out of emergency FTL, it often will do so at the capital or another starbase. Um, so if you get on top of the capital starbase and you fight their fleet, you have a decisive fleet engagement, you uh, tear up their fleet and emergency FTLs, you get to sit there and repair from their capital starbase and then they come back out of emergency FTL and they're all torn up. And then you can, that's how you get fleet wipes is when, is when you catch fleets that are coming out of emergency FTL. Um, so, and then the third reason is that the capital at this point in the game is like somewhere between 50 and 80% of somebody's economy and pops. Um, so if you can get on top of the capital and Armageddon bombardment, you just like tear the heart out of their economy. You, you cripple them for the rest of the game. And, you know, probably they get vassalized or something. Um, it's, it's not, like, empire ending, probably, unless they have another uh, genocidal on their other side or something. But, um, but it is, it, it makes them no longer uh, the kind of threat that they were before. But, so, even if we met somebody's borders out here, right, their capital's gonna be, like, way up in here, and um, it's, it's just gonna be a really long walk. One, one, to build the fleet will take time, but that's kind of expected. Um, but then to get the fleet in position to actually attack is going to, you know, how long would it take to, for this, you know, to get to our capital? Um, three years? A lot can happen in three years while your fleet is in motion. And I wonder if that's maybe another, a different way to play this would be to build the fleet and, like, station it out here somewhere so that when we meet somebody, we can go... You know, and our, our travel distances to their capital is reduced. But I think I want to just eco up here. And that is an, you know, another asset we have is that we haven't met anybody. Nobody knows we're here. Nobody's preparing for us outside of what they're doing generally, right? They're going to be having their own little, you know, rivalry fights and whatnot. Um, and we can just economy up back here in our little pocket. And it's not a perfect pocket. We're not totally safe, but we're relatively safe. And that's a pretty big world. Maybe that'll have some good districts. Um, how big was our capital sector? I'm just like, one, two, three. Yeah, so we can get all, one, two, three, four. All, all of these planets we can get in our, in our capital sector and that'll be the only one outside of it. So, um, which is great for like governor efficiency if we had a decent governor. Um, yeah, so I think that's the plan is to transition to teching and economying up while maintaining the alloy bank so that we can build a fleet when we need it. Um, we have so, so, as far as where we want to be building outposts, I want one here. I want one here to get that. I mean, I want both of these. We could skip over this one for a while, I mean. We have enough influence that it's not a big deal. I think we're going to want another construction ship. Um, and this is a, just a pretty good system. Uh, we could do here and then here, and that'll save us a little bit of influence. What can we squeeze out? We don't need this much energy. That's Yeah, maybe we start squeezing energy into research... I was also thinking one of these guys got a, these scientists got a pretty decent trade. This one is is interesting, where I could put him as a governor on the homeworld and get that extra evaluator job, and that would give us another like six unity per month. Um, which currently we're spending like two thirds of our unity output on leaders, which is crazy. And I, I've seen AI empires in observer mode fall apart because their leaders level up too fast and they can't maintain the unity. Um, upkeep and then like they end up in rebellion situations from unity shortages which is 
wild. But uh, I think here we are going to do simulation site sir first because you just, exactly because of these kind of like uh, um, unity problems. Although that that tech is this one's coming up pretty soon too, so that'll help. Yeah. Okay. Heat blob. So this is Tianki, I think. Um, so we got yeah we we were cruelly deceived by the space whales. And this has some decent energy. And um, survey complete. because it's in a nebula, we could, if we, once we get the tech, we could do the. Uh, successful. Um, nebula refinery, if we go in yielding. Yeah, at this point, I think we just want to be surveying out. Um, I'm very interested in, in this habitable. Okay, we got a. Uh, yeah, I think I think we do finish supremacy and then use it to pick up either. Uh, mm, the tech one, as far as ascension perks, we could do um, technological ascendancy. We could do um, imperial prerogative. I don't know what what's the like the starting bonus on prosperity. I think it's not very good anymore. Mining station now with twenty percent. That's Station is 20. Um, yeah. So that, we're, we're talking like 10 total. So that's like worth a pop. Um, you know, these don't help us at all right now. Besides getting us up towards an ascension perk. I think I think we'll just do it. It's not Maybe it's not the best play, but it's a simple play. Which has some, some value. <laughs> so here we could skip complete. over. Um, okay, right. So we get... Unity, um, edicts fund. We, we we could do capacity subsidies, and edicts fund would help with that. Uh, what is my like edict cost? Yeah, I don't know if we would actually be able to. That's that's wild. That like edict cost scales up so aggressively with empire size. That's like plus ten percent. That's that's just it's just straight up plus your empire size as a percent. Um. Hmm. This is also something to think about. This this selection here, where manufacturing focused is very, very strong. If you can get most of your economy from star bases, or uh, or most of your raw resources from star bases or mining stations, and switching over to uh, manufacturing focused is quite good. But um, we, we, when the time comes, having the fleet command them will be very nice. Yeah, but but economy. That's more of an that's that's a flexible one that we can use for economy or for military or as as the situation demands. Um, I think we'll skip over. We have the influence. Um, you know, we we don't. This world is like, what would I do with it? I don't know. And those deposits are like fine. Construction but, complete. 150. Interesting. Do I have some, like, oh, okay, I got a, like, one of these government things gives a mining station discount or something? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, okay, mining station build cost, 25%. Okay, I think that was the Tianki again. Uh, stinkers. Um, we could think about having a colony ship ready for when this finishes to go, go grab the mining world. Construction complete. Um... Yeah, and this this has great deposits. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we will want this one to close up to, to put this in the sector, but... Yeah, and this one has the physics bonus, so I guess we will want that as well. 20, size 20 is always nice. Um, hmm. Right. Um... Yeah, the question is like, who? if I build more labs, who do I disemploy to do that? And I think it might be generator drones? Well... Nah. Construction complete. Mining is fine, we're picking up more mining from, from stations and things. Um, we'll pick up more mining here. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. hunting them would be a net loss anyway. What are you talking about? I'm an exterminator. They're organic life. But I mean, I will take the influence. So. Entity has decrypted and then I guess we could do the uh, the amoeba first contact too. Should have been doing that concurrently. Um, yeah, so we got this guy here. Where are you go? Okay, you're just getting out that way. I don't think I want that. I think I do just want to survey here. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll just take this space, fortify it up, uh, and then be ready when we do meet someone. Construction complete. Colony ship is out. Yeah, that's an interesting point, is that we could grab this one instead. Um for the generator districts. I mean, we'll, we'll, we should, we'll do both, but... Uh, no, not you. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, and, and if, we, if we have like four or five colonies, then our empire size, you know, from colonies will start adding up. Successful. And that's an okay time to be, um, okay, wow. All right, these are these are all pretty good. Um, uh, right, yeah, so, so I, where I was going with that thought though is that if we pick up a bunch of colonies, our empire size will spike and um, picking up, uh, prerogative will start to pay off even this early if we were up at, you know, five or six colonies. Um, so Corvette hull points is really good uh, for early rushes because it gets you stronger Corvettes without needing to pay extra alloys for them, which is always nice. Planetary build speed. Right now, we're a little bit more pop bound than build speed bound. So this is something that we will want, especially when we, you know, when we have uh, more robot assembly plants coming online. But Especially if we do Prosperity next, that kind of, you know, we'll, we'll end up with 25% build speed from Prosperity. So we won't need this as badly. So I think we can skip that one. The Minerals one is very interesting because this also opens the um, Mineral Purification Plants. So I think that's the one we go for. I think uh, at this point, given that we don't have a war on our hands, um, we can we can kind of take the, the military techs a little slower. Um, which is obviously a scary thing to do, but we, we do need, we need to get our economy into shape, so. We, we've pulled ahead of somebody somehow. Not the score is terribly meaningful, but... Construction complete. How are these two? Okay, now that's a generator world. Now we're talking. Um, okay, that's really good news. Finally, something with good good districts for a resource we care about. Uh, I, I wonder, does that mean we don't colonize this one? Ah, size 20. I mean, even if we, you know, we, we could 
shove a couple districts in here and then use it mostly for alloys or something. Um, you know, that, this is still a ways out. Planetary settlement procedure initiated. Okay, here we go. We, we've crossed the Empire size threshold to start taking tradition and tech penalties. Uh, and... How are we doing here? We're, we're full on productive jobs. I think we do want a machine assembly plant, which will hurt our alloy income a little bit. But we're pulling, you know, we, we, we wanted... Um, oh, that's an interesting thought. Is How much is the Corvette now? Because we've got added armor. Um, 83? Okay, so 83 times 100 is 8300. So we want to, that's about where we want to be holding uh, our... Alloy level. So we're pulling ahead a little bit, which means we can afford to either pull people off of alloys for research, um, or you know, building robot assembly plants to spend alloys, or building star bases and more outposts, and generally not hesitating on on those things. Construction. I, I wonder. I mean, maybe we just do this one too. We got the. You. That's a pretty good system. How much will it cost? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so that's like 350 influence to, to take, you know, to lock off this whole zone. Um, so yeah, we have plenty of influence to be doing things like grabbing systems with good uh, resources or with good uh, mining stations. Technological acquisition successful. Energy grids. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, I like blue laser. Blue laser. It's really nice to have a tier two weapon. Um, it opens up disruptors. I think blue laser is a really good pick there. Given that none of those are really economy choices, uh, I, I think we'll take a weapon, and and then we'll you know we will live to regret the. Uh, we we will miss the fusion reactors we passed up last time, but. Yeah, I think I think we we do start shifting. Um, well, I mean, our our rare, rare situation is okay for now. Um, we're just gonna build labs until we can't anymore, and then we'll shift some guys off of uh, alloys probably. <laughs> um, I think space amoeba study is pretty good. A thousand energy per fleet destroyed is also pretty good, uh, but I mean we don't know. We, there might just be the one, right? We might not really have a whole lot of others in our space. So, um, but this amoeba study I think gives like a, an evasion bonus, like empire wide. Uh, so a I think we need to do that one. Our and granted, the um, yeah, fifteen hundred. Uh, I wonder. Um, I know people were complaining on the internet about. Uh, the costs of the special projects now, given that science is so much more expensive than it used to be. But I don't you know. Let's let's actually just check back here for like habitables and then go it that way. Because I don't really want to meet anybody right now. Construction complete. I almost wonder if I don't want to be scouting at all. But construction complete, okay. Construction complete. System survey complete. That's, uh, you know, decent minerals. And a choke point. Um, maybe we just do that one next, actually. Is this a lot? No, okay, that's very small. Planetary settlement procedure. Council initiated. agenda ready. Um, we'll stay on Unity until Amenities comes off cooldown. When will that be? Thirty-one. Yeah, a while. We we need the Unity. We need to be you know, pushing through traditions and. Alert! Non-standard space entity encountered. Okay, mining drones. 
I don't think we're yeah we're I, I don't think we'll end up fighting them. Just get out. Don't uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean we'll do the first contact. We got the envoys. How are we doing here? Um, this is fine for now. And then after this, um, so right, we, we don't, I guess this is the point where we start transferring alloy production over here from the capital. But, uh, our energy income is dropping. Council agenda ready. What's... <laughs> right, so I was I, I was thinking about this uh, this archaeological site. I, I'm pretty sure this is the Zeroni, um, but I don't think the Zeroni do us very much good at all as a machine. So I'm not going to worry about that. System survey complete. I um, mean, yeah, ultimately we could we could go like here and here and have just the two choke points. Um, it, we, we don't really pick up any very many habitables in that area though, and two choke points is more than one choke point. <laughs> Yeah, I think at this point we just kind of just kind of hide. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I want to scout. We'll we'll at least go go. Yeah. Ugh. So at this point, we could build like one more lab, maybe. Um, we could also energy grid at this point. Prudence. Prudence? What does that do? <laughs> Opportunist 2. Uh... Who? What? I don't. Okay, range. And disengagement chance. Interesting. I like disengagement chance. So we'll finish this out. We'll do um, prerogative, which will drop our empire size back below the threshold for uh, attack penalties. Um, I know I, I was going to talk about perks more generally, but uh, yeah, I mean, nihilistic acquisition, I, I was reading that they changed it, and now it doesn't work on species that you that have purge rights. So... It used to be as exterminators you could like abduct pops back to your homeworlds and then purge them there and get the upsides of um, you know, like the unity and energy output of that without needing to like invade planets uh, or without. Uh, um, but I don't think that works anymore. Um, enigmatic engineering, cloaking strength is you know the AI doesn't do a whole lot of offensive uh, espionage. Dominion is useless for us. I mean, Dominion would let us expand even, but we're not ally capped. Grasp the Void is tempting, especially with unyielding. Um, technological ascendancy, maybe, maybe. Um, I still like Master of Nature, but that's nostalgia for an older time when it was good. Uh, if we do end up like locked in here on seven or ten planets or whatever, maybe it's something to consider to get extra districts, but. Um, that's an interesting thought. Um, probably not. Mechromancy is a really interesting one for exterminators in particular, because the one of the problems that genocidals have is how do you profit from warfare? How do you turn warfare into more pops? Um, and this is why like necrophages are so good. Uh, you know, necrophage high, or necrophage devouring swarm, or necrophage um, purifiers. And also why uh, Terravor, right? Terravor lets you turn planets you've taken into pops. 
Um, exterminators don't have anything like that except for Mechromancy. And so Mechromancy, I think it's, yeah, 33% chance to, for purged biological pops to turn into, like, cyborg zombies that are, you know, worker worker stratum pops who can only work, uh, you know, maintenance, mining, generator, and uh, farming jobs. Um, but, you know, pops is pops, right? 33% convert, if you purge 100 pops and it's th you get 33 pops, that's a lot more than getting zero pops. Um... Mechromancy has a lot of quality of life issues, though. So, so one, the pops have take like a minus twenty five percent output penalty, so they're not nearly as good as your pops. Um, but still, bad pops are better than no pops. Uh, the other issue is that it means now you have to think about habitability because they you know they get some habitability bonuses from cyborg and zombie traits, but it's not enough for you to just completely ignore it. And especially if you want to go like machine worlds, uh, you know, their base habitability there is zero, and then it gets boosted to, you know, 20 or 50% or something by their traits. Um, I, I think one game when I went Mechromancy Exterminators, uh, my my neighbors were like Shattered Ring. So I went and I invaded them and I purged them and got all these zombie pops who had 0% base habitability anywhere but the ring, because their base species was ring habitability. Um, other issues with necromancy, uh, let's see, habitability, um, food. So these traits reduce their upkeep, the, the upkeep of the zombie pops. It, it's a 100% upkeep reduction nominally, but in practice, the upkeep reduction is capped at 90%. So you have to grow food, uh, whether this is on star bases or, um, you know, using the zombie pops themselves as farmer drones. Uh, but it's it's one more thing to think about. It's one more piece of the economy to balance when you're already trying to... I mean, you have your hands full fighting literally everyone. Um, this, if you're doing necromancy, these pops get created on planets you've taken from other people, which me makes it harder to abandon planets. It turns it into RNG, right? Because usually as an exterminator, if you you go invade somebody's planet and you don't want to keep it, it's in a position where you aren't going to be able to hold it. What you do is you invade with the armies, um, a couple of your pops will get land appropriationed over, and then you can resettle your pops back off, and when the purge finishes, the planet will be abandoned without costing you influence. And then if any if they want to take it back, they need to like go do the recolonization dance, right? And it'll take five years to build the colony or whatever. Um, so but when you when you have Mechromancy, and you can't turn Mechromancy off, you can't be like, no, no, this purge, no zombies, only purge. Um, now you can't abandon planets as effectively. Uh, you, you can try, but there's like a 33% chance that the last pop on the planet at purge time will get turned into a zombie. And then if you want to abandon the planet, you got to pay for it. Um, and just in general, if there are planets out at the front that you don't want to hold, you end up having to like pay to resettle all of these zombies back into your space. Um, which, I mean, it's a good problem to have, right? Pops is pops. Uh, but um, but it's it's a lot of micro to deal with resettling zombies. Um, to, to deal with resettling zombies to places in your space that have decent habitability for them. Um, and there's another... Ah, and, and then, if you decide that some zombie pop has traits that you don't like, or you want to get your empire size down and switch, you know, just to more efficient machine pops, you can't. They recently changed it so that the zombie cyborg pops cannot be purged um, after they've already been purged once uh, to become zombie cyber, cyborg pops. So, you are you end up stuck with these pops that aren't very good and aren't very flexible and are out in exposed positions. I don't I actually don't know what happens if you, like, if somebody who is not a machine intelligence or a hive mind or whatever goes and like takes a planet that has these pops on them. Um, so yeah, Mechromancy, really strong in theory, on you know on paper has a lot of potential to let an exterminator snowball really hard. Um, in practice, kind of a pain in the ass to, to use that way. So 
I don't, I'm, I'm not planning on taking Mechromancy, and especially right now, right? Like, um, given that we don't have anybody to go use it on immediately, nah. Uh, things we might think about, we might think about Become Crisis in a couple perks. Um, Galactic Force Projection, you know, Naval Cap is nice. Fleet Command Limit is nice. It's, it's plus 50, wow. Um, you know, Eternal Vigilance, if we're going, like, unyielding and we have, like, one choke point, maybe. Voidborn is an interesting thought uh, for the... If we do end up kind of locked in here, or, or like, you know, some, some Federation expands to our borders and they, they're they all defensive packed up and we're just stuck, um, we, we could still continue to grow our uh, economy in a confined space with Voidborn. Um, and likewise, the megastructure stuff. Machine worlds, maybe. I don't know. Um, machine worlds come out so late now, and gambling for climate restoration and all that. So, mm. yeah, that was the perk spiel. Um, where were we? Yeah, I mean, we have the energy to do one more research lab, or, or you know, overthink with the energy grid, but. Uh, this is not going to be a generator. Well, you know, right now. Right now, that is what we need. Uh, we're still a ways out on the next pop here. We, we have no prospects of getting that cleared anytime soon. Um, and then this was going to be our, our next best for... Yeah, this one, I, I think we'll, we'll generate our world here. At least for a little while. It's a ways out, though. Energy now is nice. Yeah, I guess I'm okay with it for now. Planetary surface settlement established. <laughs> System survey complete. Okay, decent minerals. And that one's, wow, that one's pretty lousy. Um, oh, there's a hmm, Tomb World. I like Tomb Worlds. Um, yeah, I guess we, I th I guess we, we do survey out towards, towards kind of this next layer of jokes. And there's a habitable on the path there. Okay, so we didn't immediately meet anybody here. Um, this could be... Eh, well, that at least is probably a dead end. But yeah, you know, I that that this would be a, a fine choke point system um, where it's got the, the black hole disengagement chance penalty. We've got, like, a planet here so we could build a habitat for a fortress or something. We can't take this one. We could use that one as a choke point, I guess. If we did go all the... But then, then we still have this stuff out here, so... Um, or here. Might, might be through the choke. Yeah, I think I think we just... Uh, just chill. Planetary Settlement Procedure Initiated. Okay, we're, we're, we're moving up here. Probably on some combination of like colony score and tech score starting to accelerate again. Construction complete. Oh, 
I think we do take this early pretty complete. soon here. Uh, that's pretty lousy. Um, I'm, I'm debating whether to go this way or kind of backfill here. Construction complete. Technological acquisition successful. Um, so I guess we could do capacity. Subsidies. Okay, so here we have some options. Uh, I was I was going to say we could do capacity subsidies now. Um, it might be worth doing. Sixty-five, fifty. Okay, so fifteen. Yeah, we were not spending our last fifteen unity per month on capacity subsidies. Uh, what what was the blocker here? It was quicksand, right? I don't think that was an option we got. No. Um, well, what are what what what's blocking? Swamp blocking mining, but only one. It's a ways out. Here we have quicksand blocking. Oop. Yeah, a generator. Here we have um, jungles blocking ag districts and mining districts. So we really don't care about jungles much. I don't even. I didn't see the swamp. Right, Swamp Block's the one mining. Uh, or we could do the um, Naval Cap one. Technological acquisition successful. Um, carrier operations, if we are kind of expecting to get into a situation where we're going to be going up against advanced enemies with, and we're going to want to have developed choke points, carriers will be really good for that. Um, uh, obviously this, we, we, we need this for synthetic ascension. You know, we, the menial, uh, drone output would be really good, but carriers are just such a such a useful tech. Here, I don't think you need the maintenance drone. And here again, I think we can draw down our alloy production to keep our... our uh... Oh, we could also be punting on mining too a little bit. Um, to make sure that we were staying in the... Well... Ah, um, let's kind of see how that all shakes out. Yeah, we, we have plenty of minerals from stations, probably. Oh, okay, so that's what happened, is, is this simulation site came online, they all went to Evaluator, uh, and that, that was what tanked our energy, in part. Construction complete.
Yeah, I think we will we will draw down mining a little further. Construction complete. System survey complete. A foreign entity has decrypted our communications. Technological acquisition successful. Um, research speed or fusion power? 5% of 180. And it's not even really 5% because of, um, well, 15, 10, 3, 25, um, yeah, so it's, it's actually more like 3 or 4%, which isn't bad, obviously, but for a 5% upkeep increase, I think we want fusion power, well, let's, let's take a look at the Corvette situation. You know, if, if we get, when, do we have the, we do not have the power to afford blue lasers. We could switch, you know, one of these uh, deflectors to armor to free up some power. How much would that free up? Um, 15. Yeah, and, and then so, so like we could do blue lasers. And I think this is kind of what you end up doing if you're being early aggressive with blue, blue lasers. Um, what does the, uh, Three damage per second versus two point three five, but ignores all shields. Mm. I don't actually know what what the the winning winning build is there. Planetary surface settlement established. So this will also be kind of a, a mediocre tech world, I guess. I mean, I guess we build an energy grid here, then that uh, I mean, that gives us two more districts to work with, which is okay. At the cost of building slot. What's our other, we have another like size 20 around here somewhere. This one? Twenty-three. Yeah, ultimately this one is probably the better Forge World. At the end of the day. Plus, yeah, like 50%, so an extra 15 energy per month. Hmm. I think I definitely want to offload mineral production from the home world to here.
Yeah, we, we could do a bit of a bit more energy offloading, I guess. Oh, we didn't actually finish that survey. That was a mistake. Do I have a... Okay, I do have a machine or something here. Okay, the doorway. Where is this? That's on on the yeah. Oh, my mouse has been glitchy recently. I'm um. No 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 no. no. Situation log adjusted. Yeah, these are pretty good. It's a nice little pickup. Construction complete. Construction complete. Okay, we, we just missed like one. We'll move him there. Oh. I should probably be having more star bases. Um, I want, I, you know, I definitely want one like here just to kind of hold the fort down. Uh, this one might be a good system for a transit hub eventually. I think we can. Yeah, we, we can afford to just like spend at least one on economy for now. System survey complete. System survey complete. Zero, so yeah, we're gonna have to spend this next pop on maintenance. Construction complete. Technological acquisition successful. Um, is this, is this the one that's blocking all of our stuff? I think it is. Yeah, quicksand. This one I think had quicksand. Um, this one was the swamp. This one we don't care about. Uh, this, do you have quicksand blockers? You have sinkholes, but they're not blocking anything important. It's an interesting bonus too. Low building cost, yeah. Yeah, we can do quicksand. Unemployment here needs to be maintenance. We're gonna need the, the Hunter Seeker pretty soon too. We're paying upkeep on a uh, industrial district we're not using. I mean, we want to have the capacity available. But... Construction complete. Oh boy. Bronze Age. Got a while before they go FTL. They're a hive, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Um, what? That's like 10, eight, eight pops. Decent districts. Moats.
I mean, eventually we'll settle this one, but we'll probably just use it for like extraction and planet assembly, or in pop assembly. Um, yeah, I think part of, I also want like a forward shipyard up here because I don't want to have to like build all my fleet back here and then bring them up when, when war breaks out, which it will eventually. Maybe the shipyard goes here and that's the bastion. I mean, ultimately, yeah, we're going to want city and then mining. And that will let us shift mining here to, I don't know. And they're, low, they're like no upkeep too. Neat. Okay, I think we're around an hour. Um, still haven't met anybody, which is good because right now we're not trying to meet anybody. We are trying to get our economy into a decent shape for 2230, uh, get our tech into a decent shape for 2230 so that we're not just completely blown away when we do finally meet people. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think we do upgrade this one and then we'll put a bastion on like one of these two. Um, yeah, the, the low starbase cap could become a problem. We could do unyielding next, and that would give us like four more, which would be enough to bastion, you know, twice. Yeah. All right, hmm. or, or we just demolish this one and hope it pays off in time. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe we just settle with, like, this is the border for now, and plan for that. We'll probably pick up another Starbase Cap tech fairly soon here. And then I think here we'll start building, we'll start doing some alloy here. Um, you know, our alloy production, is, our, our consumed from jobs has increased a lot. So maybe we just do that now, actually. Okay. Good enough for now. Things continue. I mean, we're, 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 we're I think we're getting, we're, we're doing our best to stay in the game, right? I mean, we're, the scores, we're in the middle of the pack. Um, we have, we still have enough potential energy to build out a full fleet, I think. Yes, we're still at 83. Um, with, with 40 days to build, if we, if so here, yeah, so we're gonna want, we definitely want, to, want another shipyard um, when it comes time to build out. If we, if we have a hundred, if we need about a hundred Corvettes and it takes 40 days to build, that would be 4,000 days if we were doing it serially. Um, if we go to four shipyards, it's more like 1,000 days, which is a couple years. So maybe we do want to fleet up a little bit um, playing completely in it. But I mean, the first contact will probably take about that long. So, uh, we're, we're definitely, it's, it's a, a corner we're cutting to maintain economic growth. But yeah. Thank you for watching.